Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Books and Bullshit, where the topics are made up and your opinions don't matter. Always inappropriate, rarely researched, never sorry. Today's episode is brought to you by Florida's favorite orange juice brand, Sunshine Orange Juice. It is actually sponsored by Donald Trump. He says it looks just like him. So, <laughs> Zachary Chopchinsky, the Bowtie author, coming at you live. That's right, you heard me, Bowtie author. Wrote the Curious Tale of Gabrielle series and the Hall of Doors series. Yeah, I got that one right. Thank you to the curtains. And I'm here with... Martina McAtee, author of the Dead Things series. Wait, no, no USA Today bestseller again? No, I'm not going to do that anymore, because oh. you made fun of me. Well, just, no, if I ever hit that, I'll do it too. Oh, I know, you'll do it. Every time. You'll probably do it twice an episode. I mean, I'll... I, yeah. <laughs> You'll hand out cards to people who pass by you on the street. <laughs> so if you guys... Before we get started in this, if you guys hear groaning, thumping, rumbling, any kind of weird, um, mildly sadistic sounds like that, just know that we have a sick puppo in No Pants Manor's cave, and it is... He is wearing the cone of shame, and he is not happy about it. Yeah, so now it sounds a little bit like a BDSM dungeon in here. <laughs> oh, and he's deaf, so he sounds like a fucking walrus. Dying moose. Yeah. <laughs> Sing me the song of your people. <laughs> okay, that was your cue. You've been groaning and moaning, and now we're like, on to you, Levi. And no. He's just sitting there looking like a satellite dish. <laughs> that fucking cone on his head. The cone of shame. So I do not like it. the cone of shame. <laughs> But that is him too, because it's like, squirrel! And then you better hold the fuck on, because he's about to rip your arm. Yeah, that's my dog as well. Also, um, you may hear us all exclaim in profanity at one point or another, and it is because he has the foulest milk farts I have ever smelled in my life because of the antibiotics he's on is bad. Uh, there's also a gremlin under the desk named Loki who sneezes a lot. And there's another one over here chewing on a towel whose name is Charlie. So we've got three dogs trapped in the smallest room ever with three adults. Three dogs, one podcast. <laughs> and one bare light bulb yeah. <laughs> and no light from the outside world. Right. Shit's about to get weird. <clears throat> this is like a snuff homeward bound episode. So, of course, this is the day we choose to talk about cringeworthy sex scenes. Wow, yeah. Talk about a good segue. <laughs> also, can I just say, and we can't hear it on our end, but we know you guys can hear it, that I feel so official that we have... <laughs> <laughs> the dog is just going to be groaning in disapproval this whole fucking time. <laughs> well, we did sound official. <laughs> And now you can see how truly unofficial we are. Nice timing, asshole. <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, I love that we have little intro music and shit. It's, I feel so, like, I'm a real boy. <laughs> are you cool if you try to bring up how cool you are, though? Maybe narcissistic, but yeah, I'm still... Okay, well, you're cool. definitely narcissistic. Yeah, I don't think I that mean, was ever in question. But anyway. So, yeah, we're talking about bad sex scenes in books. That's because Zach had to write his first sex scene in books. I don't like that you're putting those two things together, so fuck you. Right out the gate. <laughs> hey, and you help Shake and Bake. I had to approve said sex scene, so... But it brings up the whole awkwardness of having to write a sex scene, especially when, like, him and I are both YA authors... So not, well, I, I used to be able to say not a lot of whole, not a whole lot of sex in YA, but not anymore. Now there's yeah. tons of sex in YA. And it's, and it's in me, in, in my opinion, it's, it's difficult to write. Sex scenes are not easy to write for specifically because I have read one or two books with, uh, with the ding dong dance and, um, <laughs> AKA he's read a lot. He's jerked off to a lot of Nora Roberts. <laughs> I can't even read half those books anymore. I mean, I would, but I physically like the book is stuck. <laughs> Gross. Um, but so, what the fuck was I going with that? Oh, yeah, so there's one thing that I, I'm very, very well aware of, and I was trying to fight it consciously, and you guys may have picked up on it, is you can tell the difference between a man writing a sex scene and a woman writing a sex scene. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but... 
No, there's definitely a lot of wish fulfillment when men write sex scenes because they go out of their way to describe the guy's body, which I think is fucking hilarious because it's like wish fulfillment. Like, I wish I was six foot four with strapping, like, washboard abs. And like, so then you're just like, wait, who's he more excited to fuck? Because, <laughs> like, it sounds Himself. like... Himself. Exactly. But, but I ding, also think ding, that ding. insects generally, men and women, look at different things and appreciate different things. And I think that that's actually a really important thing is because he's trying to describe, they'll try to describe the man and why the woman's so interested in him, but it's very visual because men are very visual creatures. Right. Whereas women go straight for the emotions. They, like, how it makes them feel versus, like... Oh, like he looked like this and then he did this and that. There's a lot of that, but there's a lot more emotional brain work going on. You know, orgasms are 90% in the head. <laughs> Not that head. Oh. Don't look at that I don't like that the curtains just looked to be and like raised her eyebrows. Oh, by the way, y'all, if we didn't introduce her, the curtains is also here with us silently judging us as we try to be funny. It's true. So anyway, I will look, look, all right, all right. All right, here's the deal. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I sound like Joe Pesci right now. All yeah. right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, fuck, where was I going with that? Oh, so Good the first God. time that I actually picked up on that there was such a difference, I always knew there was a slight one, but I, I love zombies. Zombies are my favorite thing ever. So if anybody wants to get obsessed with me and start sending me, like, toys is and books and stuff. Is this a zombie stuff, sex it's, book? It's zombies. Here's the deal. <laughs> so it is a bit, it's, it's like, it's like a three-inch thick book. It's huge, and it's all, it's, um. See, this is how, this is how men describe things, right? All straight into inches. <laughs> Wow, would you like to know metric? Do you think, straight, do you think, straight, the big three inch book. Do you, do you think men abroad like describe it in centimeters? Like, oh, look at this whooping fourteen centimeters. Like, I was like, do you even know how big centimeters? Just four centimeters in an inch. So by that equivalent, that guy's got a three and a half inch dick. <laughs> so, I mean, if you're soft, and this that's is math with Zachary. If you're if you're soft. That is not a bad promise, especially if you got a grower, not if, a shower. Yeah, I was just about to say. That. Yeah, because you got some guys that are just like, oh, a button nose, and then windsock. Like, <laughs> how do you know that? Like, I, do you spend a lot of time researching? This? Hi, my name is Zach, and I'm a grower, not a shower. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never see me skinny dipping because that's too long for me to have to prove a point. Like, no, just give me a minute. Let me get this thing going. Hang on. I swear to God, that was a Seinfeld episode. I was in the pool! <laughs> that's the but that's word. true, though. Men know what that's like. It's cold! Yes! Shrinkage is a problem, and it's time that America was aware of this. The average male will experience <laughs> shrinkage at one point in his life in the 60 years. <laughs> no, it's a PSA. I've got Sarah McLaughlin sitting here with me, and she's going to start discussing sad puppies Come on, and baby Layla. dicks. <laughs> Give us your best Sarah McLaughlin. <laughs> Any odds <laughs> Angel. I just want that on the record that it's not Layla. <laughs> she sings far better than that. Is here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're supposed to bring up angels and dicks in the same sentence, but hey, you wrote a whole book about angels and dicks. So. I literally <laughs> did. But where I was going with that was in this book, so it's all short zombie. The what? zombies, not the angels and dicks. Yeah. Um, well, they're dead and stiff, right? But there's all these... Which, what's the fucking word I'm looking for here when there's all the short stories, all the different authors? Anthology? I'm, anthology. Thank you. It's a zombie anthology. But they're all horror-based, and so, like, any horror book, story, movie, whatever, there's obligatory sex. And as you're reading through it, the sex scenes would vastly differ, and I found that, like, halfway through the book, depending upon how the scene was getting described, I could wager a bet with myself, go back to the start and see the author and know if it was a man or not. Yeah. I also can tell almost immediately whether a scene was written by a man or a woman. And it's not necessarily bad, but it's definitely easy to tell the difference because men are def are more visual creatures as we discussed <laughs> yes so i remember the, the one scene where it got to me was the guy was talking about the author at the time i didn't know the it was guy. a man but i was able to pick up on it pretty quick uh a local businessman the owner of a local shop the main character's sister she was 19 and she went to work for him and he came home and saw them together but he described it like at first he didn't see what was happening. The fourteen-year-old brother that walked in the room. He was on. He was walking through the house and he heard groaning and slapping sounds. <laughs> and then he went in to describe like in anatomical and geographical detail the doggy style that they were doing when he walked into the room. And I'm like, this is weirdly specific. And I roll back and I'm like, oh, it's a dude. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think the hardest part of writing sex scenes is knowing the right amount of 
anatomical detail to give, like what's actually happening physically without making it like, <laughs> and then he did this and then she did that. Cause I read a scene. Um, if actually, you say it was from my book, I swear to God, Martina. Zach, I read and approved your sex scene. I don't know why you're so fucking insecure about this. I'm just saying, because it hasn't released yet. Like, my album hasn't dropped, so I don't know how, <laughs> how, how my fans is going to like it. Yo. Come in 2019. Um, yeah, no. The When we put out the question on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash books and bullshit podcast, if you want to join and give us your opinion. When we put that out, um, somebody didn't want to um, give their name. But they sent us a snippet of a sex scene. Oh, girl. I know the one you're talking about. Yeah. And she had edited. I'm not going to read it because I just feel like us indies get enough (laughs) shit from other people. We don't need it from ourselves. But let's just say there was some gross inaccuracies, for one, in, in the timeline of said sex scene. But also... It was more like a, I don't know, I felt like somebody had like a poster of anatomy and like one of those little pointers and like, and then she touched this and then he touched that. And then like, it was. Show it was, us on the doll where he touched yeah, exactly. her. It was like, it kept taking you out of the scene because you're just like, not only that, they were having sex in a really odd place. And I think that immediately threw me out of the m- moment just because it was like, I can't, if I say where it is, like it'll, the person, if they, God forbid, ever listen to this, will immediately know what I mean. But it was such a strange place to go with that. And also the, the transition from the just having a conversation to let's bang was very awkward. So it sort of has to be very balanced. And a lot of guys are a little too heavy with not just the physical description, but again, it's that wish fulfillment where the girl's like, like, I don't know, just orgasming every six seconds and it's all bouncing boobs and like, you know, butts, you know, like, it's just like, can I just say that I I almost think that some of these male authors that write some of those scenes, I almost want to sit down and be like, you spend an inordinate amount of time playing with boobs during sex, don't you? Like, like these are the guys that like, like radio ham radio tune in tits when they're going to town. Well, and that's the thing. Like, so, in this podcast, we are going to have Zach read some of the cringeworthy sex scenes that we have and, found. And I don't know if I if I can say the author or the title no, of the No, you can, book. and only because um, this was a contest, an actual national contest. Every year, if you guys don't know about this contest, I highly recommend you pay attention when it comes out. It's called the Awkward Sex Awards, and it's very literary in that it's mostly these ridiculously highbrow, like, lit authors that really, really think a lot of themselves. So it's kind of funny when like a whole panel of people come together and they, they gather every year, eight or so really awkward sex scenes. And then people vote on which was the worst. You can find this anywhere. We're not pointing out names. We're literally just reading the ones that somebody else has already pointed out. So write your angry hate mail to them. Yep, and um, we may drop some names, but that's because it looks like these are all trad pubs. And I have oh no, no these are one hundred. Yeah, one hundred percent. No allegiance to trad pubs. Yeah, no. As there's of, as of right now, with Scholastic or Penguin Random House would like to pick up my books. Please contact me at zachjob dot com forward slash store. Thank you. Yeah, no, we <laughs> not only do we have really no. It's okay. I don't want to say we don't have any loyalty to trad pub. It's just that they're they're definitely they're doing just fine all on their own. They don't know we exist. They don't care that we exist, and every single person on this list is still going on to cash those giant fucking checks. And our number one... Yeah, is uh, Morrissey, Lists of the Lost. And can I just say that the gentleman on the cover of this has an expression about his face. Like, he's, he's running a marathon. <laughs> he's got the baton in his hand, but he has this expression of, I'm about to puke and shit. Like, look at this. Like, Okay, well, you know who Morrissey is, right? Um, yeah, he's the guy that wrote Moondance. No, you dumb ass. Morrissey. Oh, that, that might the be... The lead might, singer of the Smiths. I might be thinking How of soon Van is Morrison. now? Sad emo music. Nope. Sweet Jesus. The opening of the Charmed series. Oh... Uh... Shut up. We all know what I'm about. Why is that funny to... Why, why, it was also in the craft. 
Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there are Morrissey fans at home going, like, you fucking morons, is that really the only song you know? <laughs> yes. Okay, yes, it is. but in our defense, Fuck Morrissey's you. not really showing his best work here in this uh, little clip that, oh, God, Zach's going to read, and I'm oh, going to have I'm the gonna worst. Oh, I'm going to read this, and I'm going to sexy voice the hell out of this. I'm going to have the worst secondhand <clears throat> embarrassment. I might actually just melt into a puddle and die. Let me get ready for this. All right, all right. Better buy the ruby red rubber baby buggy bumpers. <laughs> He's like massaging yeah. his throat like a fucking creeper. She slits sheets for the sheet slitter's wife while the sheet slitter's daughter was busy slitting sheets. What the fuck? Yeah. Never heard that one? No, we always had to do Betty Botter. And rubber baby, what, what was the bumper? Better buy the ruby red, r- ruby no, there's red like rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubby, yeah, that's the one. Ugh. Um, then there's a she sells she sells down by the seashore. Can never say it. Can never say it. And then there's a you know if you're going back to the '90s, the Animaniacs taught us United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama. Oh please, <laughs> I have such PTSD from that. Please don't. I worked in the <laughs> Warner Brothers Studio Store for 12 months, and they played that goddamn song every hour on the hour for 10 hours a day. Okay, well, we took that song, and we re- Layla and I legitimately remixed it for my first Gabrielle book, and we were going to sing it at conventions when we went, and we put our own lyrics into it. Like, yeah, like, Gabrielle has a coin, and she knows where she's going, a place that she's not been before. Like, we actually did the whole thing. Like, there were verses and stanzas, and everything flowed. It, what, that, that actually... I was like, Wait, were, you, were, like were you still singing? <laughs> like, what's happening there? It stuck in my head, and I don't know what I'm doing. I cannot... <laughs> <laughs> and that's how he's going to read this, Morrissey San, and go. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is Lists of the Lost by Morrissey. Eliza and Eth... <laughs> hang on, hang on. Give it... Shut up. Let me do this. <laughs> I'm sorry, your dog just gassed me. <laughs> Did he shit himself? <laughs> oh, you fucker. At least it's over by you. It hasn't gotten over I don't over know how Loki's yet. hair didn't just cinch off. He's literally laying next to his ass. Maybe that's why it's so bad. Maybe he shit into Loki and it came out of Loki, so it's like a double fart shit. I don't know, but that was terrible. Loki was like the silencer. Oh, I wish I hadn't cleared my nose. <laughs> oh. All right. Okay, mm-hmm. and go. Take a deep breath and calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you got for that. I can taste it. Oh, man. Oh, God. <sighs> Okay. Oh, and now back to the sexy, not yeah. sexy, sex scene. Well, to be honest, I feel like by the look of this guy's face, this is the type of attitude that was present when they wrote this. So, <clears throat> Eliza and Ezra rolled together into one giggling snowball of fear-figured copulation, screaming and shouting as they playfully bit and pulled at each other in a dangerous and clamorous roller coaster coil of sexuality. What the fuck? You scroll down. What the fuck? Are they falling down a flight of stairs? <laughs> it sounds like they're having a seizure. Okay, roller coaster coil of sexuality, violent rotations with Eliza's breasts barrel rolled across <laughs> Ezra's howling mouth and the pained frenzy of his bulbous salutation. This is one fucking sentence since I started reading. I don't ever want to hear anything about my sentences. run-on sentences ever. Yeah, been. like you could have put like a, a conjunctive adverb in here, a fucking colon, something. This is ridiculous. Wait, All can right. we stop? Because I want to know how breasts barrel roll across somebody's mouth. Across <laughs> his howling mouth and the pained frenzy of his bulbous salutation. So he's howling, and she's rolling across. Wait a minute! Him. Like <laughs> she's bail rosing across his swollen side, bulbous side. Is he titty fucking her right now? I can't tell. Like, but then how's his mouth there? Like, whose titties are getting fucked right now? Is it hers or his? And if it's his, props to you because that is a bulbous salutation. Like, I have my hand on my I chest right now. Like, I just got offended bulbous, in church. What is a bulbous salutation? That's like a that's a Pokemon, right? <laughs> Gotta catch them all. <laughs> Dude, this bitch is gonna catch something. Like, but I just have this vision of her like rolling across his body. <laughs> like, that's not how the sex works. Like, you don't cover yourself in oil and just slide around. Like, see, you just roll. Are they both just? Ro- all, have you ever seen snakes all in a big ball when they're mating? That's what this sounds. That's like. exactly oh, what. Wait, I, wait, that's wait, no, the- no, we're not done here. We're not done. Here. Okay, okay. Rolled across Ooh. Ezra's howling mouth and pain frenzy of his bulbous salutation extenuating his excitement as it whacked and (laughs) smacked its way into every muscle of Eliza's body, except for the otherwise central zone. What What? the fuck does that mean? Wait a minute. So he's missing the target? Yeah. (laughs) 
do you do you want surprise anal? Because that's how you get to like you that's back you up, line up your anal. shot, and execute. Like what the hell is wrong with you? But then also on Elias's point, like responsibility comes like she could have grabbed it and guided home. Like I don't like that I'm pantomiming all this for you. I don't either, but honestly, I, fuck both of them because they sound like just they just sound like two people who should not be fucking. This each sounds other. like terrible teenage sex. Are these adults? Are these consenting adults? Because it doesn't I don't think they're supposed to be adults. I don't know, but like what editor read this that's my question what editor was like yes barrel rolling breast this is fucking genius do you think that at any point they had an arc reader that was reading this and was like do a barrel roll <laughs> that's exactly what i thought when i heard it but even better at some point do you think there was like a meeting and they're like this is fucking garbage and they're like yeah but it's morrissey and they're like yeah but it's garbage and they're like star yeah power, but it's morrissey yeah Okay, so this, by the way, won the award of Bad Sex in Fiction 2015. This As is it one. should have. All right, so we're going to go to the next one because that one is so painful. Like, I was hoping I would at least get a semi reading one of these. Like, so I'm at least going to get invested. That one, I We I'm, were I'm hoping he wouldn't. That's ridiculous. All right. <clears throat> okay, this one looks like a Monet painting to start. This is. Um, I get Thomas. personally offended by some lit covers. Because they're just so full of themselves. Well, Do you know what I mean? And here's the deal, right? Like, this guy is clearly with this girl. She's got her hand above her head. Like, is he painting her like one of his French girls? This is ridiculous, first and foremost. Like, out the gate, right? You guys can appreciate to this. To me, it looks like she's uh, dead. getting ready to give somebody a shocker. A little bit of the boop. <laughs> if it's to the first knuckle, it's nothing weird, okay? That's just activating an erogenous zone. He, maybe she's just going to bang around all the muscles inside of him, except for the central zone. Like, what the hell is that? Did, all right, we got to go to the next one because I'm just going to go. But I'm going to go ahead and start with the fact that these two are having sex in what looks like a wheat field and they're bare ass There's rolling around in the wheat. Yeah, well, the, the, look at the, look at the, 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 look. Oh, yeah, it does like, look like it. <clears throat> who fucks bare ass in a fucking razor grain and wheat field? Like, that, you're going to get plant matter in place. That's going to itch. You're going to get, like, chiggers and bug bites. Maybe like, they just don't have any other options. Maybe, maybe they're hiding. Okay, can I also say how tan and muscular he is? And this bitch looks like she's dead. Like, this, she's so pale. All right, anyway. That's what that means, it's a Victorian. <laughs> All right, so, Against Nature by Thomas Espadal. Against Nature? Oh, my. It's going to be butt stuff. Just wait. It'll be butt stuff. All right, here we go. <clears throat> sexy boys, sexy boys. La, 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 la. Oh, yeah, there okay. it is. She presses him to the ground, pins his hands to the floor. Oh, okay. she's the is this consensual? I, I'm concerned out the gate. Okay. She kisses his face and licks it. Time out. <laughs> if, you, if you curtains, if you mid mid, we're starting to get the coitus going and you stop to lick my face game over because I don't know. No, I don't know how to take that. And this gross. Don't lick my face. That's something that like people do to torture other people. My ex used to do that whenever he was trying to like make me completely flip the fuck out. Okay. The, let's, okay, here we go. We're gonna keep going into this because I think I think this might this might be a horror book. This might be a cannibalistic thing. So let's let's get into this. Oh God, she's gonna go. lick his face and now she's gonna eat it. I'm gonna go ahead and also say that I'm very disappointed because these are very short, choppy sentences. But <laughs> she kisses his face and licks it. She bites his lip. She bites his cheek. <laughs> she bites his eyeball. He starts she, screaming. It's all over. Ah! She pants. She pants him. She pants. <laughs> Oh, pants. Pants. Like, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. I, I'm reading that weirdly as well. She pants in his ear, shouts his name in I his did that ear. to Layla earlier. Why are you yelling into his ear? Like, she pants in his ear and shouts like, <sighs> Zach. Like, what the fuck is happening right now? Like, I have the most confusing erection <laughs> ever. Sex with zombies. Yeah. Okay. She shouts his name in her, in his ear. In her, his ear. <laughs> she whips his, walled up. Hang on. Scroll, 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 down, scroll, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. <laughs> She whips his face with her hair. She whips her hair. <laughs> God damn it. I really hope that's not Willow Smith. <laughs> okay, okay. She whips his face with her hair. Ellipses. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why is there an ellipses? What did you fucking cut out of this? There's an ellipses. And it's in... It it's dot, in, dot, dot? It's in brackets. Yeah, so they cut a section out to expedite this, this, this section. But what did you cut? You better not have cut out good shit. Okay, I sincerely doubt there was any good shit to cut out, but continue. No, no, no. Good shit in this context. Um, I don't think so. Maybe it actually started to get incrementally better and it wasn't proving their case. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, so she rides him above him the way she'd imagine she'd one day ride a boy. 
now you know this was written by a man because ain't no girl ever imagined she's doing all the work. But wrong but statistically and speaking, also inaccurate. If, if you want an internal orgasm, most women have to be on top. I'm going to say that's not true. But I'm not and saying that's the only position, but that is a very successful position to Did you just mansplain me how women orgasm? I just, want, I just want to know that. Did you just mansplain to me okay. in the most factual fucking voice ever? Two things. Two things. One. <laughs> me, the nurse. I don't believe in mansplaining. Okay, three things. I don't two, believe in mansplaining. It's a thing. That was explained to me by a woman. Mm. And three. Fuck you. Eat a dick. Yeah, I was going to eat a dick. Um, <laughs> His okay. three is always and fuck you or and eat a dick. Yeah, it's one of them. Um, she rides him. She rides above him in the way she'd imagine that she'd one day ride a boy. Probably should have been a man. Just gonna go ahead and say yeah. that sounds a little creepy contextually. Very okay. Oh, ha! ha. She rides him above him the way that she'd imagine that she'd one day ride a boy, a man, a beast. Wait, so now she's in a bestiality. I don't know what the hell. She grasps his long <laughs> hair with both Wait, her hands he's, he's and rides him too? as if he were a horse. All right, time out. First off, there's a lot of animal. Like, um, so he's on all fours and she's on top of Like, is this a pegging scene? <laughs> like, like, she's on top. But wait a minute, but here's the fucked up thing, right? That, there's so much fucked up things. There's, the dude doesn't have long hair. We all know that in Trad Pub, and like, accurate, like, portrayals of main characters on covers is not a thing that actually happens. And, and also, this was translated to English by James Anderson. So there's a lot of, like, I'm starting to wonder, like, what this was like in whatever language. If I'm going to go yeah. with Thomas Espadal, I'm going to go ahead and say this was originally written in Spanish. Yeah, somewhere Thomas Espadal is like, you ruined my sex scene, you fucker. <laughs> She this wrote, was beautiful. She, she wrote him it like was, a stallion, yeah, and that, that's it was what it was. stunning. You don't translate literally, you fucking moron. Yeah. All right. That was the runner-up. That was second place. Next. Next. Whoa, okay. The martini shot, which looks like a yeah. Marilyn Monroe sex scene, and there's a lot of cameras. What? Yeah. Look, I think they're, they're filming like a sex scene in the 40s. It's like a noir sex scene. Oh, cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm into this. Is she going to like have a garter? Or are you guys going to like... That's even worse, though, when you see a cover and you get super excited about a book and then you just hit, like, a patch of awkward writing that, like, you're just like, oh, God, oh, God, I can't recover. Oh, I just have to stop oh, reading the book. Oh, girl, it's written in first person, too. This should be good. Oh, I so hate just, sex written in first picture, person, which is a huge thing now. me describing coitus or maritals, as I prefer to I call it. I don't have to picture. I've actually heard okay. you describe it. Okay. So this is called The Martini Shot by George Pelicanos. Um, and here's the deal. Um... I feel like the martini shot, first off, a shot, martini isn't a shot, so I'm wondering if that's like a cute way of them saying the money shot. Maybe. Okay. <clears throat> let's, let's start this. I pulled her to me. I took her band off. What? And her hair fell free oh. about her shoulders. Wow. This, okay, 20s. I was close. I cupped my hand around the back of her neck. Like Zach cups his microphone. Yep. <laughs> And we made out standing. Oh, and we made out standing beside my bed. Made out. We made out. <laughs> we made out. Really? Very, very, very popular 20s saying. Really? And we totally made out. Yeah. I mean, it was like hot and stuff. Yeah, I really liked it. Yeah, it like, was amazing. There was like tongue, and she had this gum in the back of her mouth, and I'm like, I, I totally got to taste it. I her think gum. he like likes me, but I don't know. He might just like me. God, I feel like this, that's such late. Okay. Award from the award winning writer and producer of The Wire. Uh, I actually like The Wire. But this explains a lot because The Wire was very cut, like, cut scene. Like, because that, the made out is so lazy here. Okay, anyway. So lazy. <clears throat> okay. And made out standing beside my bed. It felt good to both of us, assuming much. <laughs> Pressed <laughs> um, together. Um, anybody will tell you that you cannot assume what the other person is thinking when you're writing in first person. Excuse yeah. me. Yeah. When you assume, you make an ass out of you. You like that? Because when they're like, and me, I know, I said, and you. See what I'm saying? Like, it's great. It's a good setup. Okay. It felt good to both of us, pressed together, her body lush, soft, hot against mine. She was a good kisser. Our mouths fit. <laughs> okay. You're reading this all in the wrong voice. You need to be reading this she in that. She was a good kisser. No, you need to be reading it in that noir. You know what I'm talking about. Like, her legs went all the way to the floor. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about. I pulled her to me. <laughs> I took Billy her the band bones. off, and her hair fell free around her shoulders. I cupped my hand around the back of her neck, and we made out standing beside my bed. 
Okay, okay, I didn't say you had to go into Morgan Freeman. I didn't mean to go to Morgan Freeman, but my body was naturally like, let's Morgan Freeman this. <laughs> it felt good to both of us. Pressed together. Her body lush. Soft. Hot against mine. She was a good kisser. Our mouths fit. Like mine and Andy Dufresne's. <laughs> I was a man that knew how to get things, and he knew how to take things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're we are not supposed to be defiling Morgan Freeman or Tim Robbins for that matter. Yeah, I feel like he got enough of it in that movie. Yeah, he had he to crawl was... through a river of shit and filth. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> whoa, hold up! This sex scene is going on. There's a dude sitting in the shadows in this picture watching. Look. Where the word says the, there's a fucking dude sitting there. Maybe he's the director? Uh, I don't know. I'm ready for my close up. Mr. DeVille. All right. Um, okay, so we're going to go to the next one. Oh, yeah. The Making of Zombie Wars, a novel. No shit. Maybe this is the book that you read. By Alexander Hemon. But it's Al- e- A L E K S A N D E R. Alexander. So he's pretentious. It's Alec Sander. So either he is pretentious or his parents were. I'm going to die. I'm going to read this, but I'm going to die if we end up do finding that one fucking scene that I, that I described. All right. The Making of Zombie Wars by Alec Sander. Heman. Heman. Whatever. Who cares? Holman, human. And sometimes the guy who Wyman. writes bad sex. <clears throat> Far from the back of whatever. What? Hang on. Far from the back of whatever was left of his mind. Is this about a zombie fucking a person? I don't know, that but I'm intrigued. First sentence. Dude, I'm I am now intrigued. I am locked back in as you were. Is it is it but real quick, real quick question though, is it is it necrophilia if the corpse fucks you? It's necrophilia if anybody is fucking anybody who no longer has a pulse. What if you're just in an unhappy marriage? If somebody has a pulse, it's not necrophilia. So the pulse is the Yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Far from the back of whatever was left of his mind, the light of reason was struggling against being finally extinguished as he was aware that wearing a condom wouldn't have been a good idea. Written by a man. Yeah, because his dick would fall off because he is a zombie. (laughs) But there was no way that he was getting out of her because she took him in and what was she doing? Kegels? Like Jesus Christ! <laughs> she took him in. She did. She she did him a solid. She fucked him. Like the least he could do is not like in his like, life. Right? Okay. But there's no way that he was getting out of her because she had because she took him in and he was with her in every move, every gasp, kiss, and lick. What? That's it. That's the scene. What does that even mean? I don't know. Every time I hear the word lick. Like, I just, I picture, like, my dog who's just like, <laughs> like that just is not so sexy. I, I can't imagine, like, licking insects, period, generally speaking, unless you're doing, like, mouth stuff. Like, I feel like if you're licking anything, that's more foreplay stuff, like, like, and it's not, like, you have to be descriptive when it comes to that. Licking What? And why? Yeah. And for how long? Say something like, I ran the tip of my tongue across her supple nipple. No. There's not one. Supple. There's supple. one. There's one. I mean, she had recently birthed, so there was milk to taste. Like, <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that one was just... That one was just... And this is why right. Zach needs approval on all sex scenes. Hey, I, I didn't write any butt stuff in my sex scene. You guys are welcome. Okay, at first I thought this said Richard Bush. I was going to be like, your name is Dick Bush, and you're writing a fuck. But it's, it's, you're writing a terrible it's sex scene? Bosch. Oh, even worse. B-A-U-S-C-H. I'm going to go ahead and say it's Bosch or Bausch. 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 Richard, I'm a Bausch. <laughs> he, he just sounds like uh, fucking Sean Connery. <laughs> Bausch. Hot shingles, you say. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is a picture of the back of a woman on a cliffside, but there's a barren landscape. Are you trying to say this woman is barren? That's fucking rude. Yes, she's probably old. That's what they're trying to... You can't really tell, but I'm saying... That's what you're trying to get to. They're trying to say she's old. I mean, is that what her hair down there looks like? Those old weeds? That's by what you just said. That's the imagery they'd be putting in here. Don't look at me like I'm an asshole. I didn't write this bullshit. Okay, before... The book is called Before, During, and After by Dick Bush. (laughs) 
Richard Bausch. <laughs> Nick Bausch. <laughs> wow. This is really short, but I feel like it's going to be terrible. She reached up and brought him to her, then rolled over on top of him and began to softly move down. When she took him, still... <sighs> oh, wow. If Zach's getting yeah. mad... Oh, God, this is going to be good. Oh, this is going to be good. Do it. <laughs> Do it. <sighs> when she took him, still a little flaccid, into her mouth, he moaned, Oh, lover. <laughs> yeah, if you Scene. use the word lover just during sex as a human... Like, just don't ever. I fucking hate that word. I fucking hate it so much. Just so much. But anyway, ew. Flaccid, also never use that in a sex scene. <laughs> Flaccid, not sexy. Not ever. Yeah. Um, especially for growers, not showers. <laughs> she searched for it frantically. <laughs> she said, it looks like an engorged clitoris. <laughs> She said, excuse me, sir, you have a woman's penis. <laughs> uh, at least we think we're funny. Okay, yeah, go right. ahead. Finish. That's it. That's the fucking, it's that That was paragraph. the whole thing? That yeah. was it? That, that's God what damn. she said, apparently, because it was flaccid. <laughs> What's well, really fucking short? Like, I, I, yeah, again, that's what she said. <laughs> we are not doing nearly enough that's what she said for this, <laughs> for this skit. I'm going to go ahead and say right now. You have to say it, though, in the voice. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> Okay, um, so she reached up and brought him to her, then rolled over on top of him and began softly to move down. Okay, first off, why is softly necessary in this paragraph? Softly to move down? Softly moving down. Okay, where softly the fuck down, is down, the down, fucking... Down, <laughs> but seriously, like, where's the fucking editor? That's what I want to know. Just smoosh it together. Stop it. But here's the thing also is... She reached up and brought him to her, comma, Arr. then rolled... Then, <laughs> like me, Zach pulling his microphone let, towards him. Look, look at how shitty the sentence is. She reached up and brought him to her, comma, then rolled over on top of him and began to softly move down, period. But uh, that just feels like such a long, drawn-out sentence. And I know not one to talk, but there could have been so many better options here. There were, there were definitely better options. Hashtag so just saying. All right, next. That was number five on this list of eight. Number six... The Book of Numbers by Joshua Cohen. This doesn't even look like a sexy book. Like, this looks like a book that nerds would read. Like, if I read this, I looked at this, I'm like, is this going to teach me how to code? That's the thing, though. These lit novels can be literally anything. <laughs> That's what lit means? <laughs> eh. Oh, this one's, uh, this one's still short. Okay. The Book of Numbers by Joshua Cohen. Wow, this is rude. It starts, oh, she must be Italian. Oh, shit. Her mouth was an intense was her mouth was intensely void and almond mouth of citrus crescents. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That is the first fucking sentence. An almond <laughs> mouth. Her mouth was intensely avo- avoid. Like a v o i d or o v o i d. Void. Ovoid. Two words. No, her oh, mouth was ovoid. intensely avoid. An oh, almond mouth. Fuck of citrus you. crescents. Ovoid? Are you a math nerd? Are you kidding me right now? Ovoid? Oh, oh, she threw void. that ass in a rhombus. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, okay. I love that that joke's still riding a year later. <laughs> Her mouth was intensely ovoid, an almond mouth of citrus crescents, and under that sling, her breasts were like young fawns, sheep frolicking in hyssop. Psalms were about to pour of out of me. What the fuck are you writing? If the part that we mi- did, like, if there was a part that we missed that was something along the lines of, I dropped acid and then I had yeah. sex, that would make more sense than just this motherfucker, like, going through his thesaurus. Like, yeah, this doesn't make any sense. Let's throw that in there. I wonder if anybody will publish this fucking the, garbage. This isn't even sexy. Like, I, it's actually difficult to get through. I'm surprised this isn't higher on this list. This is such choppy. And granted, I know some of these guys, again, like Martina said, out the gate of this thing, these guys are not going to listen to us. They're going to go home and cash those fat checks. Yeah. Like, I totally get that. But what the fuck? Also, there's this weird thing that I notice in the literary world as far as, like, traditionally published. And that's if somebody reads something and they don't understand it, 
a lot of times, rather than just admit this makes no fucking sense, a lot of times they're just like, this is genius. Oh my God, you're going to make a fortune. And then they just send their little PR minions out there to give all these influences their opinion, who then turn around and give all their people their opinion. And they just take it. They're like, oh, well, she said it's good. It must be good, even if I don't understand it. Here, here's the deal with this. And I'm going to look at this from two different aspects. One, the actual like reading, like the consumer-based reading, this is written terribly. However, from a literature standpoint and wordsmithing, this is actually structured well. He did good. He did a good job with using, fr- frankly, nonsensical phrases, trying to bring them back to life. I'm sure at some point somebody used some of these things. But why would you do this? This is like somebody this, that writes dense poetry. Right. But honestly, think about it. If you're somebody who doesn't know how to write sex scenes, like, and it just gives you the fucking creeps and you just don't know how you're going to pull it off, but do you want to do it? This is actually a genius way to get around that because people aren't going to call you on it. They're going to be like, oh, maybe I just don't understand his prose. Like, this is how he sees it. He's a genius. He's an artist. Who am I to tell him that, it, like, this the way the he writes sex that scenes wore is like. a suit and wayfarers to school and tried to read poetry to girls during lunch. Yeah. This is that guy. This is that you guy. You got your ass beat a lot, dude. And I'm sorry, Joshua Cohen, for you always getting your ass beat. But you're probably cashing those fat checks now. Yeah. And probably everything you write, no matter how bad it is, they'll oh. probably continue to publish you. First time, first one on this list, New York Times bestselling author, Erica Jong. Oh. Oh. She, she made it on the list? She's number seven. She's, she's a big name, and she's a woman. This is the first woman we've had. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Fear of Dying, a novel. That does not sound sexy. No. Um, and it's a silhouette with a zipper where the vagina should be? Oh. Are you trying to say your vagina has teeth? That's vagina ventata. That's teeth. We've already done that. The vagina monologues. <laughs> I'm Sharon Stone, and I'm Lamb Chap. Um, all right, so here we go. Fear of Dying, Erica Jong, number seven of eight on this list in 2015. I am swept away with waves of anticipation that, that blank out my mind and let me focus on only let me focus only on pleasure, releasing the painful past, releasing the desire to return there and be young and beautiful again. Fuck young and beautiful. This is worth everything, and I come with fierce contractions that seem to go on and on endlessly, like you're writing. Um <laughs> What? How is this a sex scene? I'm not gonna lie. Like, this can almost be a she's about to take life by the balls scene. Like I don't I'm, know. Like, I was with her right up until she got to the contractions. <laughs> but here's the thing. Notice the difference. This is an yeah. emotional power ballad almost, and this yes. is written by a woman. All yeah. the other ones were her titties flopped as I put my wiener in them. Like, that's <laughs> like, that is the difference. <laughs> so power ballad versus gangster rap. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's like... Pretty much, like the other one, they, they were they were awkward, and so there's that's the difference between the two. But this, I can see why this isn't very good because it's not even like comically not good. It's just as bad. But honestly, like I feel like if you read the whole scene, maybe it would have more. It would make more sense. I still am cringing over the contractions, but like. I feel almost like she got thrown on the list because they were like, okay, we can't just keep throwing guys up here. Eventually they're going to catch on. Well, and, and here's the deal. I, this one, I almost feel like contextually could have flowed with what was around it. They took a paragraph from a scene. Right. This could have been like, like I said, an emotional reckoning, the come to of yeah. now things are going to happen. Right. This paragraph on its own does not work. No. And but it seems almost kind of spiteful. Like they deliberately took it out of context to like not just drive that. home how weird it sounded. An NYTBA and a big author. So right. so they, they they threw they tried to you know throw some weight into the back end of this list. Yeah, I don't know. And it's like it seems kind of like like she just pissed off the wrong person, <laughs> right? Or there's somebody wicked jaded on that. that yeah, that's exactly. The like I was almost number one. He was standing in her room. Okay, this one, I'm not entirely sure. This, I don't like this cover. Um, Oh, well, that's what's important. This is called Fates and Furies by Lauren Groff. Lauren as a woman? L-A-U-R-E-N? Yes. Oh, okay. Groff. Groff? I don't know. This is supposed to be like... 
Are those so those waves is at the side of like an evergreen tree covered in ice and snow. That's and, what I call a cover somebody phoned in. Yeah. This, she made yeah. that at home in Photoshop. And she put a novel in there like, okay, by the way, guys, please stop putting a novel on your books because no fucking shit. I have a book in my hand. Do you do that, Martina? Uh, yeah, exactly. Stop putting a novel on your books because no fucking shit. <laughs> Are you talking about the front or the back? Because I do both. <laughs> I don't know, like, honestly, if I'd known that you had done it, I wouldn't have been a smartass and said anything, but now, hi! Yeah, you might have known if you'd ever bothered to pick up one of my books and even so much as look at it. I picked up your books, I photographed them. And didn't notice the title or the back? No. Uh, Yeah, that actually makes perfect sense for you. Here's the deal, here's the deal. So you might be able to explain it to me. Why do people put a novel on their books? Honestly, not trying to be a smart ass. Are you talking about, again, are you talking about the back part where, the like, the front? You mean, like, why do people have long titles? No. This says Fate and Furies, a novel. Oh, okay. I thought you meant, like, why are people writing, like, horribly long, like, synopsis on the back? Or why are they Cur- making true. huge titles? The Curious Tale of Gabrielle, Webley and the World... Ma- I write long novels. No, I'm talking about, literally, they put a novel. That is key for everybody. Like, this is highbrow literature. But you or it's not, a, it's not a novella. But you don't actually put a novel. Like, the word... That, that's no, I just I have the surprised. series. I'm no, like, I just have the that? series. No, usually it's, like, a, a clue. It's just a contextual clue for people. Like, this is a full-length book. And it usually means it's a standalone. So this is that's an, that sounds like an old style where where because once upon a time a novel was cons- anything less than it was like what was it it was like sixty five or seventy thousand. I think it's words. sixty thousand is the cutoff. Like but, anything under that is considered but a novella. Now they dropped it to fifty thousand because of the like basically now where there's some money at is in shorter stories and that's what people are buying. So now the definition for that has been dropped to like fifty grand, and so that's a lot of people are doing that. But I feel like they're yeah as we're looking at bricks that Martina could build a fucking house with, although. I can't give you shit because that's what that's how big I want my books to be. Go ahead and tell me why my books aren't selling, Zach. <laughs> the books should be selling. Your... Go ahead. It's fine. I'll Just, wait. Because people are stupid. <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm saying, I'm saying it, then that might not be a legit thing, but that's what trad pubs are doing. The trad pubs have such market control that they literally create the fashion and trends. Well, they tell people like not to, not to have books on like um. Molly's book, she had a, a Beauty and the Beast retelling, and the first thing the agent said was, can you knock this down from, like, 110 to, like, 75,000 words? Do you know how hard it is to shave that kind of length off of a fucking book? Oh, that's easy. Give it to the curtain. She loves cutting fucking chunks out of books. <laughs> so, I mean, Molly did it. She got it down there. But, like, it's still just crazy to me because if you look at any book written by Cassandra Clare... She makes my books look like fucking short stories. Like, um, what is it? Uh, the one, uh, Lady Midnight? 715 fucking Jesus. pages. Like, what do you mean? Uh, no, it was uh, six by nine, 715 pages. That's going to be, that's got to be like almost a third bigger than your book. You could beat somebody to death with it. It was a brick and it was a six by nine like mine. It was huge. Well, here's the deal is when I do, um, I'm redoing The Curious Tale of Gabrielle on the series and I think we we're talking about it and I'm going to make it the book that I think it should be, but I was doing the math and collectively putting all the other, that's going to, that book is going to be over 200,000 words initially until I start editing it and changing some things around the base mass of it is going to be about 220,000 by my math of the current word counts of them. I look at it this way, like people right now who are just writing to market, which I'm not knocking writing to market. I am a little bit, but whatever, it's fine. You, you guys do are making you. more money than I way am. Way more probably. money than me. Like people who write to market, they want to put out a book a month. They're writing 40,000, 50,000 word stories, calling them novels, throw them out there, writing it as a series. They're making good money. I just don't have that mentality. I never have. I won't even buy a book that's under a hundred thousand words. To me, it's not worth my hard earned money for a story that I'm literally going to read in six hours. Well, especially if you go to like the big box stores, you know, and we know I'm talking about with books and stuff. And it's like now they're, they're, they're trying to push market share into hardcover books again. Like it used to be back in the nineties. And you know, you go in there and it's like, Oh, 26 99 for, you know, 400 page novel. It's like, are you fucking high? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. And, but I just feel like it's not enough story for my money. 
Like, I want to, like, go, like, on an adventure. Like, I want to see that sort of story arc. And it doesn't seem to be necessarily that with a lot of the writing to market. I'm not talking about anybody in particular, but just, like, it's formulaic and they're fine with that. They just want to put out a bunch of books and reap, you know, reap the rewards. They reap the rewards. Um, and and they're doing it. They're making $140,000, $200,000 a year writing these books, and that's awesome some for them. Some of these people make that in a month. Uh, some of them do. If you write porn, there is a very good chance you can make a million dollars a year if you if you have the right Martina, market. can you teach me how to write porn? <laughs> have you seen me actually manage to get anything finished? No. Um and and here's and I that if I got into porn, that would be one where I would actually I would write that to market. I would, and I already know the market that I would write it to. If you, the thing is, is to make money in erotica, not porn, but like romantic erotica, or and even. By the way, like, just as Martina's talking, I'm going to go ahead and validate that she does know what she's talking about. Martina used to literally live in the porn industry and work. I didn't, in li- it. didn't live there. I did work in the porn industry, but, but I did she, not live but, there. But <laughs> I'm just saying, because some people are going to like, oh, what does she know? Because yeah. what she writes, no, sage advice from Martina on this when yeah. she knows her shit. No, I know far too much about porn and any, any part of the industry. I know way too much about it. Um, but I can tell you that erotica is sex driven, whereas romance, uh, rom- uh, yeah, you're right. Romance, right. Er- erotic romance is more the story. Romance is the, is the main focus and the sex is sort of your cherry on top, so to speak. Um, I hate that term. <laughs> so gross. Oh my uh, God. The chair. Oh. No, okay. Calm down. Jesus. I didn't realize I triggered you over there. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Yeah. But like the people who make the most in male female romance driven um in that industry are people who legit go for like the raunchiest most riding that line of inappropriate like right, <laughs> yeah right, right. <laughs> riding all kinds of things but you know it's things that are borderline incest like step brothers um they, some of them are just like really horrible people. Like the guys are all like, not just like, Oh, bad boys, but like legit criminals, disgusting, super alpha males. All the girls are like insipid virgins. Like that, that whole dark romance thing makes people a lot of money, but you have to really kind of almost sell your soul or just really be into that. If you're into weird fake rape scenes or you're into like that sort of thing, like, more power to you. Whatever. See, Do your me, thing. It would have to be a sell your soul thing because as much, and as much as I've joked about looking in that industry is, is trying to make a, a business move into that. I cannot write any of that while my grandmother's still alive because she reads everything I write and out of respect and love for her, I won't touch the industry until then. Well, not only that, you would have to write it under a pen name and nobody would ever have to know you were a guy. Men can write gay romance and probably have a pretty decent following, but I got to tell you, there's maybe three guys in the male, female like romantic erotica industry and they do well for themselves, but their books, they got to sell their souls for it. They are some of the cringiest, most awful, like call him daddy kind of like, like storylines out there. I just, yeah, I just, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be judgy, but I am judgy and I'm maybe I'm not sorry, but it's if just I wrote like, under a pen name, it would be Throbert Johnson. Well, that only works if you're writing satire porn, which, as we all know, thank you, Chuck Tingle, is a very lucrative industry okay, as well. Okay, can I also say that as we're talking about bad written sex scenes, one of my favorite sex scenes that I've ever heard was read to us in a hotel room, Martina Oh, and yes. That was the funniest. You guys have not heard a good sex scene until you've actually heard a decently described sex scene with math puns in it. Yeah, no, she was going straight up satire porn, and she did such a fucking brilliant job. Nailed but I don't want to say her name because I don't know if she's publishing under her own name. Yes. So but we're just going to say the person in our Books and Bullshit podcast, if she wishes to name herself in the Facebook group so that everybody can know that she writes awesome satirical math porn, feel free to put that out there so and, that others know, can enjoy it as well. And we'll do a throwback. Even in an episode where we're not talking about this subject, if you want to mail us a snippet, I'll read it in my sexy voice. Oh, joy. Mm. <clears throat> All right. 
So, Martina? Yes, Zach? Oh, I thought you yeah, Oh, um, well, I was going to say something, but uh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, so the key to making money, really, if you're going to write erotica, is to really write romantic, like, is to focus on the romance. I'm listening to you, but I read this paragraph. What? It, what? Are you, where are you? Are you still in the... The Fate and Furies by Lauren Goroff. Oh, you finally got to the paragraph? Yeah. You didn't seem it. like it was worthy. Nope. The last sentence makes it worthy. Oh, well, then we're going to pause and we're going to let Zach read the fate and the fa- Fates and the Fury dirtiness. Glorious. He was made to do this. There was a cracking all around and a blistering sun-like heat. And Gwenny was shuddering beneath him. And one, two, three, he burst within her. <laughs> Finn. Fucking gross. There should be no bursting. Okay. You know there's cream pie porn, Martina. Listen, I used to write cream pie porn. I used to have to write porn in every conceivable, disgusting, fetishy type market. Except for the five I mentioned previous podcast that probably got trashed. You mentioned anyway, four and forgot the fifth. That's the true. I still haven't remembered the yeah. fifth. Um, but <laughs> yeah, uh, I used to have to write all of that stuff. And the, it was basically the raunchier and the more disgusting. I really had to just find my inner frat boy and literally lose every conceivable like thing I knew about writing to write for that porn site. Because you're not, you're not, you're writing like Dear Penthouse Forum type style letters. You know what I mean? Like, you're just trying to get guys to click that button. It doesn't really matter. Or click that button. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't really <laughs> matter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't really care, like, about being a good writer. You just care about using the buzzwords that are going to get guys to be like, oh, I got to look at that video. You know, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, but niche markets make the most money when it comes to porn. So gay romance um, the really dark romance, which I really hate the term dark romance. If you need to tie a girl up and rape her against her will, that's not romantic. It's not. If that turns you on, cool. Still not romance. Still not romance. Don't, I'm not saying don't write it. I'm saying maybe just don't call it romance because that sends a really weird message to the world. Now that I've ruined my writing career for romance, um... Like I said, you can make money off of it, but if you want to make a lot of money, you got to be willing to sort of either just pop out 20 novels a month or sell your soul and write some really raunchy shit. Yep. All right, well, that's all that's on this list. I think we're about tapped with that one. Yeah, I think that's it. Um, I think we're good. This was uh, awesome. We need to do this more often. But have you read sex scenes? I have. There's. We've got probably ten more lists. Yeah, we may have to. We may have to do. Have to do a part two of this episode. We this can always awesome. do this on the Patreon too. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Zach's we, porny reading and corner. We, we need to set that up today. So that's something we're going to work on. There's going to be a Patreon, and when we our next podcast, hopefully, when we discuss it a little bit, we might have some information for you about that. What we're looking at. But in the meantime. I've enjoyed reading porn with you guys, you dirty fucking perverts. If you're still with us, you rock. If you bailed out because you couldn't handle it, you're a bitch. Um, (laughs) Why don't, on that note, I give you the name of our social media sites. Hit it, Martina. (laughs) All right. If you want to follow us on Facebook, it's www.facebook.com slash books and bullshit podcast. It's a group. It's private so that we can talk as much shit as we want, but just click on join. It's not like we, you know, quiz you or anything to get in there. Also, you can follow us on Instagram, www.instagram.com slash books and BS podcast, because I couldn't fit bullshit in the name. But anyway, um, and I think that's it for now. We're also eventually going to set up an email, but we haven't done that just yet. And we'll have more stipulations when we set the email, what you guys can do, things like that with it. But uh Thanks for coming on by. Again, this has been Zachary Chopchinsky and Martina McAtee, the Bowtie author and the author of the Dead Thing series. He says with a question mark at the end, even though we've been friends for like three fucking years. Love you, mean it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this has been uh, Books and Bullshit, Mostly Bull. Oh, no shit. <laughs>